Okay, listen to this. What if I told you all the problems that you have with mixing, sound selection, or even arrangement, it all comes to not understanding one single concept, and you will massively improve your production game once you grasp it. Let me show you how it works. The first one, super simple. We have a line visualize the duration. So if you take this example, very short sound. But the more we go to the right side, longer, even longer, and this one is almost continuous. And the next concept is the richness. The idea is exactly the same. On the left side, we have simpler sounds, getting richer, even more richer, and here we have super rich sound. And if we take these two and combine together, this hand will be the longer sounds and higher up we go, the richer sound. So here, short and simple, and here will be long and richer. And one final step here will be the richness and color. Because here we have a lot of space to utilize, sometimes a simple sound could be darker or brighter. Similar here, richer but darker, richer and balanced, and richer and brighter. And remembering this concept will be super useful when you're making your track. Now, let me show you with examples how this can massively improve your production game. I want you to listen this loop. And if you take a listen to the lead sound, Quite rich sound, right? I think we are in this area and it's also having both low and high end. So I'm gonna go for balance like this, right? And then duration. Is it really long or short? It's getting on and off, even when it's on, it's quite long. So I'm gonna put somewhere around here. Quite rich sound, halfway to the duration. Now, what we need to do is select an arpeggio for this one to complement the sound. So what would you do here, right? Because we are up here, probably will go a bit more down here, so a bit darker. And because we are in short, I will probably go something like this. A darker arpeggio that is probably longer, covering up the empty spaces quite a bit. We have two sounds over here. Quite long, goes all the time, and then we have the other one. Also quite long. If we place these two, the first one is around here, isn't it? It is rich, it is brighter on the high end, it is sustained. And the second one is here. Just from the look of it, I can guess that this will work much better because the contrast and separation is much higher than probably somewhere around this one. Let's see if the theory is correct. With this one. It doesn't work, does it? Let's try the other one. like a magic. Of course, nobody picks up this chart every time they select a sound, but understand the concept will really help you to pick right sounds every time. If you are enjoying the video up to now, please consider like and subscribe, it really helps a ton. But what if it is not a synth sound? And what if it doesn't have this much of a contrast? Let's take a look. This time, we have these drums. Now, obviously, I want the driving 16 hats over here. I have two sounds, but before we pick our 16 hat, let's see where this hat sits in our chart. It's a quite crispy sound, and it is rich on the high end, right? Somewhere around here. So in theory, something here will be fine, but remember, we are making the drum, so we don't have like bass in the drum. So, so the area that is available for us will be a bit more limited around here. What we want to do is putting just on top or around it, something like this. Maybe a bit brighter, maybe a bit shorter. If I put somewhere around here, this will be enough separation for me. Now we have two hats over here. This is the first one, and this is the second one. From the looks of it, the second one is, I think, closer to this sound. So it's much more likely that it will sit right around here in our chart. And this will probably sound really awkward, while the other one probably sitting around here. Let's test it out. Second one first. Let's switch the first one. As long as you remember this chart, the sound selection should be quite straightforward. This video is made possible by my new Melodic Techno Sample Pack. This is the best Melodic Techno Sample Pack that I have created. If you find yourself scrolling through billions of different samples and losing quite a bit precious time, and if you are producing Melodic Techno and neighboring genres, this pack has 
all the modern sounds that you need. And I guarantee you, you will probably use it in every single project going forward, because I know I will. Links are in the description below. Understanding the chart will help you even separate the similar sounds in mixing. Let me show you. This time, we have this loop over here. Obviously, the vocals and the pads are a bit crashing, isn't it? For a beginner, this will probably be fine and it will be ignored, but to take it next level, we have to consider our chart again. Let's listen to vocals. I think it's slightly balanced vocal, I will even put it slightly brighter, but it's not playing all the time and richness probably somewhere around here, isn't it? And for the pads, we have another balanced sound, but this time they play all the time and almost similarly rich, maybe slightly darker, but still very close to each other. So we see immediately the problem over here, super similar, and because it's playing all the time, they will not be separating. <laughs> And we can clearly hear the issue when they play exactly at the same time. What you can do, you can first separate the tamra. You can maybe move this a bit up and maybe slide a bit down. Easiest way, let's go to Vox, get an EQ, boost a bit. Like this. We are increasing the richness on the high end and I'm gonna go to pads, cut down the lines a bit. At the moment, pets are playing all the time, but we can do a trick where the pets are ducked a little bit down, especially on the crashing tamras, so that the duration is separated as well. Easiest way, you can use something like compression, but I'm gonna use a Pro MB and target those exact frequencies that we are dealing with. External, and we are listening from the Vox. If I do this, you will hear it. Right? We are targeting this problem frequencies and then when they hit we are ducking those frequencies inside the pad and listen how much difference these simple steps make in our track immediately beautiful how this can help you with the arrangement this chart actually have high energy and low energy zones and if you understand these different zones you can actually pick the right samples or the right elements to make your tracks feel much more dynamic so how does that work this area of this chart is actually what we will call low energy zone most of the things that we have here won't have much richness in it and on top of that not sustain all the time so if we keep our elements over here, we will end up with a part with low energy. And if you need to increase the energy, let's say we want the chorus part or a drop, then you will find your high energy sounds around here. By the sounds that we are using are quite rich, quite sustained, constantly hearing this sound and feeling the energy. If you are thinking about the drums, maybe we have eld of high hats and we have eld of maybe driving hats, driving percussions. They are constantly healing during the bar and bringing a lot of energy to your tracks. If we are talking about the synthesizers, maybe they are sustained high lead sounds or super softs, giving this energy to your track. And the rest of the chart, I will say here and here, this is our transition area. So you can bring the energy slowly from here to here by moving so or by moving so, depending on what you are looking for. And if you want to learn more about the arrangement and how these energy zones can help you, I have a whole arrangement series over here. Take a look.